fundamental theorem of algebra. So when you do when you do n minus one, that's degree minus one, right? That's the degree minus one. Now what's degree minus one for though? That's the degree minus one. No, the I'm, maximum. I mean, yeah, the maximum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for this one, it would be a maximum of three extrema. So does that make sense? You go with that, J. Mike. All right. Any other vocabulary terms from here that I need to talk about? Huh? Domain. What do we mean by domain the in all mathematics? The x values. So all the x values. Inputs. Now remember, how do we write our domain using what? The x values. The inputs. Isn't the, the x in a, 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 a So remember that's that. It, so what you're thinking about is in behavior with the arrow. So as x goes to something, y goes to something. Notice that's just the ends. But when we talk about domain. Remember, we use a bracket or we use a parenthesis, and we put the minimum domain. Is that X or Y? Domain. So minimum X, comma, minimum y. maximum, maximum, maximum X. X. If we're talking about domain, it's minimum X to maximum X. Today, I will make sure I more clearly cover bracket versus parenthesis. Um, range then would not be X; it would be Y. So minimum Y and maximum Y. So when we say domain and range, we got to know x versus y, and we got to know how to identify the minimum and the maximum in those respective directions. Okay, that's it. Any other questions off of this vocabulary foundation? Oh, uh, what did you say, Duan? Oh, I thought somebody started speaking. The fundamental oh. theorem. Yo, one, I just answered that question. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Two, one, you just spoke over Duan. Duan, what you got? Um, so on the test, is it going to be like a lot of equations? Like, am I going to have to solve a bunch of equations? Now be careful. Not solving. Yeah. Right? Solving means finding what makes those equations true. So I'm With like a standard form, I will not ever ask you to solve. The only types of functions I will ask you to solve are linear and quadratic. Right? So we should know how to solve 2x squared minus 4x plus 8. What would I do to solve that equation? Uh, equal sides, right? No. Can't see. Quadratic formula. Thank you. Remember, when it's a quadratic in standard form, we're using that quadratic formula to solve that equation. I did equate like um positive or minus b plus or minus b. I mean, x equals negative b plus or minus. Well, square root of b squared minus 4ac all, all divided by 2a. You've got to make sure you study that over the next three weeks and know it. Okay, That's just for the standard form, though. Um, if it's in factored form, you just use the zero product property. All right. So degree is how many... Be careful with how many x's. Because like, this only has three x's. Yeah, I'm saying like... It's the highest never. power yeah. in standard form. It's how many zeros it has, though. Right? Like, it has four zeros. So. Say again. The x starts off at zero. Let me think on what you're asking. The well, if I'm finding a y-intercept, you substitute zero for x. But that's not what we're asking. So when we say zeros, remember we mean the output is zero, not the input. And then we solve that. Okay. Um, in this target, here's what I need y'all to look at. How do we determine the maximum or the possible number of x-intercepts for a polynomial based on the equation? How many x-intercepts could this have? Four. Seven? Seven. Wait, what? Huh? Seven. Because it's a four and it's a third one. Four, buddy. That's not what you pull it. Say that again, Dewan. It's not factored form. What form is this in? Standard. Standard. So if it's in standard, I just look at the highest power. So how many x intercepts could it have? Four. Now remember, four is only the maximum. So how many could it have? It could have four, three, two, one, or zero. Okay. So this, remember, is a fourth degree, right? A fourth degree could look something like this. Does it have any x-intercepts? No. no. But remember, if it's an odd degree, don't odd degrees have yeah. different end behavior? Yeah. So what does an odd degree always have to have at least one of? An x-intercept. Oh. Remember, an odd degree has different end behavior, so an odd degree has to have at least one x-intercept um, because of that. Right? It's got to go from the positives to the negatives or vice versa.
Okay, possible number of extrema. How many extrema could this fourth degree polynomial have? Uh, three. Could have three or one. one. Remember the degree minus one, but they come in pairs. It's the first Wednesday of the month, yep. Uh, determining the end behavior. That's something we want to know. We have not gotten to this idea of building a polynomial function through factors. That's something you actually already know. I'm going to be very direct with the instruction on there. So for everyone who's always like, man, Mr. Kenny, I wish you'd just tell us the answer. I'm going to tell you how to do that because we got to get moving. Caden's like, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is the second proficiency scale. You'll notice it's a whole lot of the same exact stuff, okay? Especially the foundational piece. What I will make a note of is I'm not going to make you identify functions in a table. Um, we just don't have time. We'll do that as a part of the review because that was from Unit 2 to prepare from um, the final for those who have to take it. Um, okay. What's the difference between relative and absolute extrema of a polynomial? Uh, absolute it can be the absolute highest, but I will point this out. Is there an absolute highest here? So remember, in general, when you say extrema, extrema could be one of two things. Extrema could be a... Could be a maximum or a minimum. Extremum just means that it is an extreme, okay? So max and min are extremes. Are you saying extreme up, extreme on? So it comes from a Latin root. Um, I'm not, I'll go and tell you this. I'm not going to sweat it, whichever one you do. If you want to say extremums, whatever. But um is singular, a is plural from the Latin root. If you want to just say extremums, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Um, okay, so all that to say, we see extrema when there's a turn, right? So here, here, here. Is that the absolute highest point for the entire graph? No. Nope. No, it keeps going up above that, doesn't it? Yeah. So I wouldn't call this an absolute maximum, but I would call it a relative maximum. What would I call this? Relative minimum. And absolute minimum. Notice, are there any y values below this point? No. So that's a relative and absolute minimum. Okay? So that's a relative and absolute minimum. That's it. Okay? Uh, the rest of this is just figuring out from the graph, so going backwards. If I were to give you this function right here, and we're going to practice with this kind of stuff, what type of function do you, what do you know about this function based on that graph? It's not a quadratic. It's definitely not a quadratic. Good note. What else do we know? It has four x-intercepts. It has four x-intercepts. So what degree do you think it might be? Quarter Five. or... Fourth degree, maybe? Like fourth degree. I was thinking of the name. Is that what the fourth degree is called? Fourth degree? Yes, fourth degree is called fourth degree. I'm going to say okay. six. You want to say six? Yeah. Why do you think six? Okay, so notice, great note about, hey, one, two, three, four x-intercepts, but it's got five turns. If I take four minus one, I only get three. If there's five terms, what does the degree have to be at least? Four. Four. Six. At least six degrees. Why are you confused? What you got? So remember, I made this graph here. And so uh, I think as Deanna noted, hey, it has five terms here. And remember, the maximum number of terms is n minus one. So if n, no, if n minus one is five, what has to go here to get five? Six. six. N has to, the degree has to be at least 6. Okay. Notice, Bacardi, if you write this out, you put a 4 there, 4 minus 1 does not equal 5. I know, I was thinking okay? So, yes, sir. it has 5 turns, it's at least 6 degree. Does the 6 degree make sense based on the N behavior? Uh, How do we know it's even from the N behavior? Because the N behavior is the same, right? So those are things we'd want to notice. Hey, the N behavior is the same, so it's got to be even degree. What do you think the leading coefficient would be? Bless you. Thank you. Is that leading coefficient going to be positive or negative? Uh, uh, no, positive. Positive. Because it's going to be positive. Because uh, they're going negative. Yeah, when it's negative. Six minus one, you guys, that's positive. So let, ooh, there we go. let me remind you, if I were to graph a parabola that looks like this, 
Would that A would that lead would the A be positive or negative? Negative. Negative. So this leading coefficient is positive. Negative. Negative. Guys, yeah, notice the going down. they're going down. Right. So it, the leading coefficient is. But that's two negative. So what a negative? Nope. Alright. Concave down. The leading coefficient was negative. Yes. So the leading coefficient is negative. All right. Um, in this class, we are not doing intervals of increase decrease. We don't have time for that. We're not doing tables, and we're not doing average rate of change. So we have a significantly reduced thing. Literally everything that we are doing is based on the mathematic activity. Um, so we're going to be practicing with these ideas. So I will get that updated one to you soon. That's not what I wanted. Okay. Did we do these true falses yesterday in class? No. Okay. So this is where we're going to start. This is on the back side of mathematics. Now I need everyone to lock in because I'm about to give you a massive hint because a couple of students did not pay attention to this in fourth block yesterday when I pointed this out and then they're like, I have no clue. Okay, so right here, when we say in, what do we mean by in? That is the degree. degree. Okay, so the degree, so notice in number one, the degree must be odd, true or false. In number, um, pause, I want y'all to talk about it for a few minutes first. Number two. A, what do you think we mean by A right here? Oh, what page is that? It's on the back of the mathematic activity. What's it called? The table we've been had every day. Yeah, it's, we've literally been working on it since before things could be break. The leading coefficient. A is my leading coefficient. Okay? What do you think C stands for? Mathematic activity. So what I would point out here is I want you to notice how it's a x to the n leading coefficient degree plus b x to the n minus one plus dot 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 plus c. That's my constant, my y intercept at the end. So we want to notice that that's just the y intercept, just like a x squared plus b x plus c is the y intercept. So I want to give you four to five minutes. It's just true or false. Be prepared to explain why. Four to five minutes to talk with your group and come up with which of these statements you believe is true, which ones are false, and why. So talk about that within your groups. Number one you think is true? Okay, go talk about it because you said you don't know what's going on. So I need you to talk about it and I'll be here for a minute or so while you'll talk about it to make sure that we are coming to the same conclusion. Thank you, Ray Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you, Addison. Thank you, J. Mike. Thank you, Maddie. Let's talk about it. If you saw the question at that point, let me know. All right, so number one, true or false, The raise your hand if you have an idea. And then if you want to push back or add on to you, can do that. True or false, in must be odd. False. I said raise your hand, dog. Okay, Amber, hit us up. What you got? Why do you say false? Because that side going up and that side going down. Okay, the end point I mean, the end behavior is too different. Okay, so the end behavior is different. Okay, does anyone want to push back on that or add on to that? You what? I say it's true. Okay, so true. You agree. So did you want to add anything on to her reasoning for that evidence or? I thought she said it was false. Oh, didn't you say true? No, I said true. Yeah. You said true. No, you said false. I may have messed up. I know their group said true earlier because I was talking with them. Oh, I got something I could add to it. It's false. Why do you think it's false? Because um, the degree, um, most of the time, it's always um, the highest power is always um, a positive number. Like the highest power of the degree is always a positive number. Okay. So Vicari said the degree is almost always a positive number. Um, so it can't be odd. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. But, but Vicari, we got to base it on the mathematics. I got you. I got you. Okay. So 
Yo, say it doesn't matter in this situation. Why would the degree almost always being positive not matter in this situation? Because, because like, you can have another wow. one, like, um, when the NBA, you said when the NBA is different, they're going to be opposite. So, one, Jamie and her group's going back to the idea of when the end behavior is different, we talked about the fact that the degree is odd. But also, I would point this out. Does this say anything about positive or negative in number one? No. No. So, remember, Vicari, like, to be a polynomial, and I will say, I haven't talked about this a ton, but to be a polynomial, the powers always have to be a whole number, a positive integer, right? So, to be a polynomial in the first place, you're not going to have a negative power. Right. Okay. Um, so, do so you right? read what's there? N must be odd. Okay. Uh, number two, I think this is a more difficult one for a lot of students. Um, Taj, I'm going to start with your group. Anyone in your group? Uh, what did y'all say for number two and why? I said true. You said true? Yeah. Okay, what was your reasoning for that? Because the, the little first arrow, okay. instead of going up, down, it started going up. Okay. So, because this is going up, you're thinking that it A is positive, it's increasing, okay? I got some. Okay, so J. Mike, you got something? Yeah. Okay. See, it's going to be false. You think it's going to be false? Yeah. So, with the two, the two points, you're going to have to, you're going to start from the up point. You're going to start from the up point. What, what up point are you referring to? Hmm? What up point? Yeah. The, the, the maximum. The maximum to the level. Ooh, I'm glad I asked this question. Can you come circle the point you're referring to? Alright. Okay, so I want you all to pay attention to this because I know what J. Mike's talking about, but there's a couple of small things language-wise I need us to pay attention to here. Okay? So first off, I want you all to think about it. Is that a point right there? No. What is that? It's the end behavior, right? Notice that's the end behavior showing it's going up and to the left. Okay, so be careful, right? Not a point, okay? It's not an ending point. It's also, and I need you all to hear me clearly on this, to be a maximum, what did the function have to do? It had to stop. Start. Stop what, though? Stop and go. Stop what? Increasing. Increasing, and it had to start. Decreasing. So I need you all to hear me clearly on this. Can the ends be a maximum or a minimum? The end. You said what? You said can a, an end be a maximum or a minimum? Yes, it can be both. Either. No. Remember how we just talked about it? It has to stop increasing and start to decrease. Or stop decreasing and start to increase. At the, its core, to be a maximum or a minimum, it has to be a turn. Is it turning up here? No, stop it. No, it's continuing. One, again, it's not stopping. Well, That's an error. It's going to keep going. So, J. Mike, everybody else, we go with why we can't call that a stopping point. We can't call it a maximum. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. I knew what you were talking about, but I'm glad that language came up so we can learn from that. No, you're good. You're good. Yeah, yeah. But we got to learn from it so we can go and get better. So that's perfect. So that end behavior you said is going up, but like that's exactly what Taj was saying. So why is that Why is that leading you to say false? Alright, so again, boom. We gonna um, we gonna have to um, start right here, bring that more down right here. It's decreasing at that point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you got, Jamie? We don't start at the very top of the graph. We start at the point. You start at the point first point. point. So y'all are starting over here? No, no, no we don't start no, no, at the first. Like, like. No. They talking about the first eggs in so. Sure. Right here. You start Ooh. Right. Ooh. We don't start no graph up here. We start right here at the first point. Oh, okay. So I'm glad I'm at now. See, this is why I want us having a conversation. So mm -hmm. I will point yeah. this out. How do you read a book from, from, left, right. from left to right? So I always read a graph from way over here this direction. Is this to the left or to the right of this? To the left. left. It's to the left. So actually, I am Both. starting here. Both. So. I know that it has an arrow and it makes us think we're going left, but we read a graph just like we read a book from left to right. No, what I'm saying is, you said that we started the arrow, I'm saying, like, when you do the little, you wrote a thing. Yeah, yeah, I got you. So, what you're thinking about, well, and so the reason why we always did that, really, okay. So, I am super glad that this is coming up so I can address this. Um, because that means I created a mistake or a misunderstanding. So really, 
we always focus on those x-intercepts, and it's easy to start an x-intercept, but we read a graph just like we read a book. Really, so what's a positive times a negative? negative. So really what it's doing is it's coming this way. But in my mind, it's harder to make sure I hit the x-intercept. So I always start here, and then I go left just because it's easy. But graphs are always read left to right. If I'm reading this graph, I am going from down here because it's to the left and up to here. Because notice we continue moving to the right. It's just we focus on those x-intercepts because those are our zeros. So, um, so is it true or false? So, so I'm going to finally answer in a second, but remember, just like J. Mike said, we're starting here, right? And are we increasing or decreasing? Decrease. Decrease. We're decreasing. So A needs to be false. negative. Or the statement is false. A is negative. Number two, man. Okay. So I know that was a whole lot, but listen, guys, this is why I want to have these conversations, because there was a lot of things, something that I caused a misunderstanding on, and that's my bad but misunderstandings we had that we got to address, right? We're talking about the end behavior. Remember when we read a graph, we always go from left to right. Technically, there's not even a point here. So always start at the left and go to the right, okay? All right, any questions about number two? Did that answer your question, Maddie? And y'all, did that answer y'all's question about the lean coefficient? Um, number three, true or false? C is greater than zero. True. False. True. 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 Okay, so we got a lot of trues. Uh, I've heard a lot from over here. Can I get a true? Does anyone over here agree that it's true? And want to give an explanation why? Oh, I can. I can push back. No, it's not yet. You can push back in a second. Okay. But I want to hear some trues because we had a lot of trues over here. Someone over here. No one over here said true. It's true. You said true. Okay, Addison. Why did y'all say true? Because, I mean, it's kind of obvious if you look at the y-intercept, it's not zero. So tell me when I get to the y-intercept. That's my idea. Right there, so that's my y-intercept? Yeah, so that's What kind of number is that? A positive. A positive? We got number three. Number three? And Vicari, what kind of numbers are greater than zero? Any positive numbers. numbers. So is that a positive number? Mm -hmm. Yes. So is that a true or false statement? Okay. So learn from it. It's okay to make mistakes. we got to learn and grow. Now, number four is actually the trickiest one on here. I had a good conversation with Clea about this um, and a couple others. Uh, so I want to hear from others first. Taj, what you got? I got true. You got true. Why is that? I have four turns. There's four turns. That's the most common response. Yeah, there's four turns. So the degree is probably what? False. 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 Say again. Well, so it turns to one, turns two, turns three, turns four. And so remember, the number of turns is n minus one. So what does n have to be to get four? Five. Five, right? But Clea, what did you and I talk about over there? So it most likely is five. And I just said that now, but like, let me ask this. What if the degree was seven? Okay. If the degree was 7, how many turns, how many extrema could that function have? It could have 6, right? It could have a max of 6, but it could also have 4 or 2 or 0. So could it be something other than 5th degree? Right. So notice this just says n must be 5. It probably is 5. But could it be something else? It could be. It could be. So the statement is false. false. Hey, so you have the right idea. Again, guys, hear me on this. That's the right idea. I like that we're thinking, hey, it's probably fifth degree. But just be aware, it's not guaranteed that it's fifth degree. So it can't be lower, but it could be higher. Say again. Well, so remember, my assessments are not just true or false. If you gave the reasoning that Taj just did of, hey, there's four turns, so the degree is five, is that strong evidence of understanding? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that complete evidence of understanding? No. That, that's, a, that's strong evidence, though. Right? Like, you understand the relationship between the degree and the maximum number of extreme. Okay. So here's what I want us to do at this point. 
Um, we're going to take a few minutes in class, now and after lunch, to look at possible equations based on given characteristics. And so I'm going to give you, I'm going to do a couple of these with you um, and point out some things. So first off, number one, we're just going to create a polynomial in standard form that has these characteristics. I want four x-intercepts. So what's probably true about that? Uh, well, two has to have a double root? Not necessarily. Well, one can have a double root and there two linear. The degree is five. It could be a triple root. Well, so, so first off, what does the end behavior being the same tell us? It's, it's, an, five, even it's an even number. number. So it could be five. Not number. Even degree. Ah, we'll talk, finish this up after lunch. So, what's up? So, mathematic task at the back. Check your understanding at the very top. So here, where we left off, Ms. Kenny was talking about how when the end behavior is the same, what do we know about the degree? It's going to be an even degree, yes. Now, how many x-intercepts do we need? Four. Um, yeah, how is your card? Yes, what's up? Do you leave after this block or you stay here? I will be leaving after this block. This is my last day. Wow. This is your last day. Yeah. That's your you going to be a teacher next year? No. What? Oh, he's, like, he's, he's, he's talking to a different classroom right now. He'll be back soon. What's up? I'm I mean, it's my uh, friend. He's in a different classroom right now. Okay, so, end behavior is the same, therefore we have an even degree. Okay, so. Four x intercepts. What can what can anyone tell me about us having four x intercepts? What's up? Yeah. Perfect. Don't it. Baking. Uh, let me at least cover this first. Did you get into any conversations? No. Big fat. Oh no, that wasn't me. Okay. I figured it's not good. Okay. So before we left for lunch, we came to the conclusion that. This function had to have an even degree. Yes, sir. So let's do this. If you ask the student came into the room, I will let you go in a minute without having to use the bathroom pass. But let me cover these two problems first while we start vertical surfaces so you two can go. All right. Um, Did you say me? And when we get to vertical surfaces. All right. So in behavior is the same even degree, which makes sense because how many intercepts are there? Or x intercepts? Four. Four. Which might imply there's how many zeros? But could be six zeros, or it could just be. How about. Could it have four zeros? It could have six zeros. It could have eight zeros. So notice this is telling us. Hey, I'm trying to teach you. Thank you. Um, and so we want to recognize that we know it has to be even degree. We know that it's at least fourth degree, maybe higher. And what does this tell us about? What direction it goes in? So, not necessarily maximum, but which direction is going. This is even, so the end behavior is the same and up, or the same and down. Based on this statement, which one is it? Why is it up? It goes up and down. So as we go to the left, Y is going up. So what does that tell me about my leading coefficient? It has to be positive. All right. So taking all that into account, here's a possible equation. Here's a second possible equation. Notice right here, those are only two equations. You know how many potential, potentially correct equations there are? 335. Try more. Infinity. Try more. Infinity? There's infinitely many. Because here's the thing. All that it has to be is fourth degree or higher, and it has to be even degree. And I want you to think about it. I wrote 3x to the 6 plus 4x plus 8, but could I change this to a minus 5 here? No. Okay? What we need to recognize, what I want you to see is, all of this only speaks to that leading term. Does the end of this matter at all? No. So don't stress that. Make up whatever you want, okay? 
the only thing that determines how many intercepts there are, what the end behavior is, what the um, direction the end behavior is, is the leading term, so the highest power, and the leading coefficient. That's it. Say again. What did we just go over? Writing a potential polynomial equation based on these characteristics. So, just writing an equation based on those characteristics. Yes, Maddie. Don't worry about the Nope. It could change to whatever you want. This would still be a polynomial with 4x intercepts or possibly 4x intercepts, the same end behavior and going up. Right? Number three. So that, that's an example for number one. Remember, how many correct equations are there? Infinity. Infinitely many. It just has to have the right degree, or a correct degree, and the correct type of leading coefficient. Looking here at number three, though, what do we know? What, what would have to be true, or is it impossible? My question is, what would... I have to have an <coughs> equation, or is it one of those impossible situations? Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 more it's impossible. impossible. Why is it impossible? Because the end behaviors can't be the same if it's the same. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can the end behavior be the same if it's seventh degree? Oh, no. No, because no. no, that's not 7x intercepts. No. That's seventh degree or seven zeros. That can't be the same end behavior, so this would be impossible. Okay? It's Cannot have this and this at the same time. That's it. Okay? So here's what I want to do is I want to give you five minutes to work with your small groups and do as many as you can from two, four, five, and six. So two, four, five, and six. Work within your small groups. Come up with at least one equation if possible for the two, four, five, and six. <laughs> That's a bummer. Just kidding. It's all good. Um, That's what I did. That X equals negative three X. They lost the number five. Ricardo, that is just one option. How many correct answers are there? Is that number five or number seven? Number five. There is no number, number seven. Number six, I mean. Dude, I started at number five. Yes, it's number five. This is also a potential for number five. That is a four or nine. A nine. A nine. It, it, it has to be seventh degree or higher. It has six x intercepts. It's got to be at least six degree, but we want different end behavior, so it has to be a higher power. All right. So, this is the very first page that you tore out of your textbook. Let's see, page 236. If you can get this page out from the textbook, pages that you tore out. I can't do that. Okay. For the sake of time, I'm not getting you to the vertical surfaces right now. If you want to, you can move there, but not everyone has to go there. I'm going to give you five minutes. Okay, 236. So, I want you to take five minutes to answer A through C. If you can, move on to D and E as well. Huh? We don't have time. We'll, we'll do it tomorrow. Okay. Wait. Yeah. Why you just have this You did say I mean, I moved it back, but like, I'm having to adjust it. Like, if I haven't given you a demonstrator understanding, I'm not going to get it to you tomorrow, the test tomorrow. The test can't even be Friday at this point. It'll probably be Monday. we got to finish this so you'll have experience with it. So, I need y'all to work on this. Five minutes. Page 236. Be aware, we are not going to go... We can go through G. We are not going into H or I. So, definitely work on A, B, C. Try to get as far as you can. Of A. Would the A value of this probably be positive or negative? Positive. Why positive? Because the overall is increasing. It's overall increasing, right? Overall, that function's increasing. We read from left to right. Starts down here, ends up here. So the A value is probably, not is probably, the A value is positive. Overall increasing. Oh, the one. You ain't a puppy, you ain't a dog, you ain't a wolf. See, that's all I need to attend by doing some bad. 
Now where is the paper? I don't got the paper. Then you didn't tear it out. Go I find a book and tear it out. Bro, I got for 12B, is the degree of this function even or odd? Odd. odd. Because the behavior is different. So one, the end behavior is different. <laughs> Two, Kamaya, uh, not Kamaya, Kalia, what did you notice? Notice there's five zeros. Because how many zeros are right here? One. How many are here? Two. How many are here? One. And here? One. So that's one, two, three, four, five zeros. All right. So it's an odd degree. Can this function be a cubic? No. Why not? It's got four turns, right? So it's got to be higher than third degree. It's got five zeros, so it's got to be higher than third degree. It's got to be at least fifth degree. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hobby, for helping us find that page. Okay, domain of this function. What would be the domain of this? By the way, for like part of your evidence of understanding, what's a note you could always make about domain to help? That it's X. That it's what? X. X values. So I need the minimum X and I need the... What's the minimum X? Negative. Yeah, does it ever quit going left? No. Okay, does it ever quit going right? No. So the minimum X is? Negative Maximum? Positive. There's my domain. Notice very simple details to provide evidence of understanding. X values, minimum X, maximum X. That's it. That's it. So what would that range be? Uh, y values, so range is y, y values. Maximum X. We need minimum Y. Maximum Y. What's my minimum Y? Uh, negative infinity. Yeah, is every quit going down? No, no. 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 Maximum Y? Positive. Positive. Sweet. Done. Again, that'd be clear evidence of understanding, 100%, right? Like, you've told me you know there are Y values, you told me you know it's minimum, maximum, okay? Now, I'm going to skip that for right now. What I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to just do parts F and G tonight on your own. Uh, we'll talk about it first thing tomorrow. But I want to talk about domain and range of the next question. Okay, so page 237. I want to talk about domain and range of this one. Because this one has a unique element that we have not gotten a chance to talk about very much. In the last three minutes of class, I need to talk about this. So... Page 237. What's my minimum x? Negative infinity. What's my maximum x? Positive infinity. Okay, so there's my minimum and maximum x. Now, the range. What's my minimum y? Negative what? Okay. What's my maximum y? Positive. 2.2. I would say, notice it doesn't go up forever, Ricari. This is the highest y value of the entire graph. So, one, what am I going to call that maximum? Relative and absolute maximum. So, what's my maximum y? 2.2, 2.25. I'm good with any of that. Now, hear me clearly on this. Pay attention. If, if, you have a number that you are actually equaling, or the function is actually equaling. You don't use a parenthesis. You use a bracket. bracket. The bracket goes on numbers that the function actually includes or equals. Notice, can you ever get to infinity? No. Infinity is infinity. So, 
<laughs> we use that infinity, or we use that bracket when we actually include that number. Uh, you can only get for a little bit because he has like the earliest place that there is. Hey, by the way, Dawn, you can sign your paper because you put it on top of my bridge. That's what I'm looking for. I didn't cheat though. I know. I know. Well, leave it there. I know that.